Hey, Bianca, thank you. Um, thanks, Luke, right. that was really awesome. Um, yeah, so let me go ahead and share my screen. <laughs> Hi, everyone. <clears throat> So, can you see my screen? Okay. <laughs> okay, great. So, I'm going to go ahead and talk about um, the value of of uh, of GitOps uh, with help. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, yes, I don't quite know how that happened. Sorry about that. Let's redo this. <laughs> oh, so sorry. <laughs> there we go. How is that? OK, perfect. There we go. All right, so um, first I'm going to be going over the benefits of running Helm, the business benefits specifically of running Helm, no matter how you run it, um, uh, mainly as a way to set up in comparing with the additional layer of benefits that um, you get when you run Helm with GitOps. So just kind of going over these points here. Um, the very first, the very first uh, benefit, um, I, I'm not sure how many people in the audience here know, but um, of running Helm in general is that it increases team velocity. Um, most people approach Helm because they're, they've, uh, they've seen instructions on how to install an application using Helm. Um, many applications now have Helm charts, um, either maintained by the same developers uh, or the same maintainers of that application, or by um, other projects such as Bitnami or, or JFrog um, or other members of the community. So the nice thing about this is that uh, a lot of the a lot of these are battle tested. Um, uh, the idea generally is that charts are a package. It's a way to package applications for Kubernetes. And since Kubernetes is run, um, it, it's declared, uh, it's a, Kubernetes in, in itself is a, declared, uh, a declarative system and you're supposed to declare how you want to run your applications on it, how you want your containers to run, what, your, what all, all of the other uh, API objects for Kubernetes are supposed to run that way. Uh, the chart packages those configurations for you and allows your developers to really focus on the application and not so much on operating Kubernetes. Um, that's the idea anyway. So um, uh, the, the second main thing that this does is um, it, helps you, um, it helps you decrease downtime for your apps in general. So the idea is, um, uh, one of the concepts that Helm gives on top of Kubernetes, just vanilla Kubernetes, is it uh, introduces the concept of a release. So you may have heard your, your engineers, your engineering teams um, describe that Kubernetes is complex. Um, and, I, and, that's, and that's true. Uh, it's, it's complex in a sense because it's abstracted. Um, for all of the different use cases that one could need to run infrastructure. Um, what the charts do is allow you to group those resources together into a single manageable unit called a release. And so in, for the way it decreases, Helm helps you decrease downtime is that um, while Kubernetes does have various ways, various rollout strategies, um, Helm's releases are also versioned. So you can fairly easily roll back to the last known release, the last stable uh, release that you need. Um, in production, this is really valuable. In other environments, it's also very helpful for um, just getting to the problem. And, uh, and reliability in general is improved because um, that complexity is not only grouped, it, it not only helps by grouping those resources together, Helm primarily also templates that those resources. So um, you may have, in order to connect one resource to another, you may have various annotations, labels that are supposed to match, uh, match labels 
um, and, and, and different other configurations that are intended to work together. Um, this in general requires a pretty high bar of knowledge for engineering teams to understand how to do that properly with Kubernetes. Charts help that process by templating that out for you. Um, the best maintained charts, as I said, that are battle tested, they, they have these configurations not only templated, but, um, but Helm uses, uh, excuse me, Golang's templating engine in order to allow logic as well. So a team can set uh, a value, essentially have uh, values that they pass to a chart um, simple, simpler configurations to do to make logical changes as well, not only uh, expand variables and, and so on. So that's very helpful because um, you have less errors, generally speaking. Um, so that was a very, very brief introduction and many of you may know that, but if you didn't, that'll help with the, these uh, comparisons coming up with what happens, um, excuse me, what's valuable in running Helm specifically in GitOps, not necessarily just any other way that you could deploy Helm. So the very first, the very first value, uh, you may have heard this uh, a lot today, uh, but uh, is, that, is that GitOps' reconciliation approach is, um, is the major benefit here. So, the, this happens all the time, or this happens routinely with normal CI CD systems. Um, there are going to be errors. It happens, uh, whether it's a DNS issue, whether uh, the service API issue, I'm thinking of things like when GitHub has, GitHub's API has, has issues, or when Circle CI's API has issues, um, when there's some sort of an error somewhere in the chain, um, this happens. And uh, there's also sometimes, sometimes um, race conditions, depending on how your CI is set up, where you're trying to help call the Helm client. It's not necessarily, um, it's not necessarily called the way that you need it to be called. So um, reconciliation helps this essentially. GitOps help. GitOps really helps this by um, using Kubernetes for reconciliation. It and and just to be clear, what that means. Uh, I'm sure you've probably heard this a lot so far, but just to, to make sure that it's, it's in the context here as well. What I mean by that is that rather than a CI CD system essentially having a command that is run, and then um, if it's, uh, let's say, if it fails, then um, you've, your, your team has to analyze what happened, uh, re, re fix that if, if need be, uh, rerun that in order to get it to work. Um, <clears throat> What GitOps reconciliation is, it, it, it assumes that there are going to be failures. Um, this happens and as Kubernetes does with the rest of its API, it attempts to retry what you have configured that you want to happen with Helm. So um, you, don't, you don't really have to sit there at the dashboard. I mean, you can, of course, and you're encouraged to uh, monitor, but the system should take care of this for you. So. There's a constant attempt to ensure that the Helm release that you have configured that you want actually does happen the way that you've, the way that you have uh, stored those values in Git in your version control system. So I just wanted to make one more point here, um, this last bolded point at the end, that your engineers still have control even even with this type of automation. This is something that I think we could possibly highlight a bit more for new for potential new adopters of Flux. Um, we really highlight the automation quite a bit and that is very important. It helps you to remove a lot of manual work. It helps a lot of, uh, the, a lot of human error. Um, it does um, improve team collaboration. You know, your, your engineers can also focus on other things as opposed to doing all of the manual work. Um, one, I, I come from a, uh, um, an enterprise uh, background as well and I understand that um, not every service is a, is a perfectly well-formed microservice. Uh, not every business <laughs> setup uh, is where you want it to be in the future, eventually. Um, you've got a step to getting there. And there are, um, there are going to be bugs uh, with, with code. There are going to be flaws. Um, and there are going to be some, some sometimes brittle pieces of your application's uh, infra system. Um, and so, it's really important, I think, for operations people, DevOps people, and engineering teams to know 
that while this automation is happening, you still are in control. You can, you can pause this reconciliation when you want to, if you need to um, make sure that your data lines up the way you want it to, that you have, um, that any other piece of your system um, might require some manual work because it's not quite where you want it to be. You, you can do this, you can have manual gates and you can uh, at any point stop this reconciliation and then re resume it. So that's, that's a really important note. And with Flux 2, you can do that on a per release basis, a per Helm release basis. So you may have a number of different pieces of your system that are being released incrementally. You don't want to have to pause reconciliation on everything. So um, the, next important, <laughs> the next important value, uh, I think that, that GitOps uh, adds to running Helm, um, running the Helm operator, excuse me, the Helm controller in GitOps, I mean, on top of just running Helm in general, is that um, with Helm in general, there are various tools to declare what kind of release you want to set, set out. Um, but uh, ultimately, all of those are, uh, are different than the standard way of running Helm. The standard way of running Helm commands is Helm is a client, and you run imperative commands. You, you tell Helm what you want it to do. Um, uh, with GitOps, of course, with, with Flux and with other GitOps tooling, you declare what you want um, your Helm release to look like. And if for any reason, whether it's, your, whether it's because your cluster has a problem or whether it's because something else happened, let's say you have a team member who accidentally deleted your Helm release uh, or whatever happens, you really don't need to manually figure out what, which pieces are missing, um, how someone screwed up one little piece of your overall, um, <laughs> your overall puzzle you let Kubernetes do it for you because you've declared exactly how you want your release to look and how all those resources should look for you. Um, uh, the nice thing about Flux specifically um, is that on top of the Helm's existing automatic rollback functionality I mentioned before, Flux also adds retries. So if a rollback doesn't work initially, um, you can configure how you want your retries to look. You can, you can infinitely retry. You can have a certain number of retries. You can have um, a certain uh, uh, wait time between them. This is, really, this is really helpful because there are cases where um, a retry won't work because your applications, depending on something else outside of your release, for example, um, a, um, an image <laughs> to be present, <laughs> you know, a, a new image version to be present, perhaps uh, they, it, didn't, it didn't happen in, in sequence, you know, um, or perhaps uh, an init container is looking for, looking for some other service to be ready. So you, you, this retry functionality is very helpful. Otherwise you'd have to, um, and people do build it into their CI systems. They build these kinds of wait loops and while loops. Um, it's just a bit more fragile, whereas the retries is, um, is, uh, is fairly battle tested. So the other, the other, another you know, major point for uh, uh, consistency, uh, for reliability rather, is that your teams can, um, can debug in a, in a way um, that I think is a lot more convenient for them than a standard Helm release. So you can, in a non-production environment, you, your teams generally may want to add an option to keep the last failed release so that they can go back in there and figure out what happened. And, um, and ultimately, telemetry is, is important, right? Um, the, the ability to, to understand, the ability to, to see all of what's happening in one place is one of the really nice things that Flux adds, um, Flux specifically for uh, Flux GitOps specifically adds to Helm releases. Generally, if you are running a CI system, an external CI system, again, whether it's Jenkins X, um, I don't want to call out all the various CI systems because they're all good in their own ways. Um, it's just a different model. So what Flux does is it's, it sends um, logging and errors uh, it, 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 
attaches them to your, your Kubernetes resources, the resources that are supposed to define your Helm release and your other various resources that are part of the Flux system. So that just means that um, rather than you having to send this from some other system into a common, um, a common um, observability uh, reporting engine, uh, you can, um, this is really kind of built in. So for example, um, uh, if you have Prometheus set up already in your cluster, Flux already supports that out of the box. Um, you don't have to set up a, an, an additional supporting, uh, excuse me, an additional reporting engine or um, have your team spend additional cycles making sure that that data gets sent and aggregated properly. Um, but it, you know, also uh, Flux can easily integrate with various other telemetry export tools. So um, the nice thing about this is that in short, that uh, your team members um, really all have access to what's happened. If you have one team member, for example, running an imperative command, if, excuse me, Helm using imperative commands, those, the feedback that they get is going to be in their terminal. Um, if you're running NCI, you can still get it. You just have to look in various places. So Flux just brings it all together for you. And this is just a general value of GitOps, right? Is that you have a clear audit trail. Um, because every, because all of your changes to your Helm releases um, and all of your configurations are controlled through pull requests, or at least stored in, in, in Git, uh, hopefully you're doing pull requests, but, but through, through version control, um, you can look through Git history and you can understand which exactly what happened and when, by whom. Um, and you know, if you want to, go back, you can revert to your last known, uh, your last good, <laughs> your last good commit. So that's, that's just the general value of GitOps, but it's a really important value to lay on top of um, using Helm specifically. Um, and so I also just wanted to mention in the, in the same breath as describing um, cl a clarity for an audit trail and, and, and clarity in communication, um, the notification controller for Flux integrates with various um, communication tools for your team, including Slack. So it's just kind of helpful and nice. And so, you know, that just in short, that's, that's the summary that I wanted to <laughs> get to here for the business value. I hope this has been somewhat helpful um, that, uh, that Flux GitOps gives you that additional layer of value um, to the benefits of running Helm in whatever other way you might do this. So better together.